Hi, it's John Miskos here from Tinker Electric. In today's video, we're going to go through the work that is needed to be able to put a PCB, so electronics, into a box. Seems quite simple, but there's a couple things to it. So just gonna go through a couple of the pointers, how I do things. If you do things different, that's great. I would love to hear from you. Um, this is the procedure that I've worked up over time. All right, so first off, you need to have a look at, you know, roughly what your layout is looking like. So this is my layout here. That's a rough, you know, 60 by 100. This is all in mils since I'm Australian. Um, and so, you know, after you've roughly laid out your stuff, you can start to understand what type of uh, box you're going to need. So it's, it's sort your PCB, don't completely lay it out, get the box and then make sure that everything meshes together and go from there. So what's different about this particular one is I've got a couple uh, 2.5 millimeter headphone um, jacks and a couple uh, RJ45 connectors here. So to be a, like, um, you, you want to have them flush uh, to the outside. So I've been on Hammond's website. So Hammond is a manufacturer of boxes and going through the different types, you know, there's aluminium, not really needed for this. Water type, don't really need that. Um, handheld, I, I do need these connectors to be on the outside, so not quite. You know, now we're getting closer to it, so it's like ABS plastic. I personally like black. Um, I also think that this project can be done with um, some flanges because it's going to be mounted um, on something, just allowing the client to be able to do that. So I've gone ahead and picked like a flanged one of these variants, most likely this one, economical. Don't need it to be flame retardant. And you go into that and there's a few variants again. I picked ones that are roughly uh, what I'm looking for. So this is the overall box size um, and that's like the internal depth. I don't need much, so I tried to minimize that. Um, but the you know approximately 100 approximately 60 odd so that brings me to this one and so here's the box um, there and what's really nice with Hammond is that they provide the um, the PCB sizing so basically we're going to have to make a outline or a drawing for, for this PCB sizing for it to all work together. Um, one of the rough uh, calculations I wanted to do was working out the distance between the edge of um, the PCB and the outer part of the, vo of the box. So here we can see that, you know, total height of the PCB is 57.5. Total of the box. So careful because that's like the internal edge there. It's not quiet. So, you know, this is going to give you absolute overall. overall. There is a little bit of a slope to it. Our PCB is mounted on the bottom though. As you can see on that diagram there and the 3d rendering so that's 63.32 so what did i say 63.32 take 57.5 0.5 so on overall there's 5.8 difference but you got to divide by by 2 2.91 all right so that's what i was playing around with here so this is my headphone jack i'll uh, try and insert a picture of what that actually looks like actually i so this is the 2.5 mil jack there 
and this is the tiny surface mount um, headphone jack there so you can see that fits in together I've got a little bit of a concern about the pulling force when you go to take it out um, a little bit wary of that it does have these little uh, plastic lugs so you can see on the board here and here it's got these little plastic lugs to give it a bit of more mechanical strength but I'm still a little bit suspect mm. we'll see otherwise I'll have to correct it so this line that's the edge of the board here this line here I've placed 2.91 2.91 off of the board and so I'm trying to make sure that you know the the jack is is uh, pretty much in line with that I was playing around with some distances this is the max dist before it starts throwing an error about the um, uh, distance from the board edge so it, it does that to um, you know there's there's a little bit of variance in there um, actually thinking about it that is ground so even if it does just nib it a little bit it sort of would be acceptable you would lose this um, little bit of mechanical support there though so the, this is pretty much what the job is. It's, it's hundreds and hundreds of, of these little choices um, and just knowing the ones that are going to nip you in the butt and the ones that aren't. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to impose the, um, the board layout on top of my board. All right, so it's just going to be a little bit of drawing and I'm probably going to fast forward it. You might have noticed that I'm actually using a hundred across. I'm being cheeky. I get um, a discount at my supplier if I uh, do less than a 10 by 10 board. So that's why I'm doing 100 across and not 108. So I place the, um, the holes and they should be correct. Obviously I'm gonna need to move a couple things after. Um, and I'm thinking I'll put the ethernets on the on the side. So this is that's going to be a little bit of fun um, trying to wriggle all that in. I'm being really cheeky again by using this um, large regulator that's um, an off-board uh, piece. So one other potential saving that I could do is put all these um, surface mount resistors and caps on the opposite side of the board and I could probably um, move away from these uh, through hole uh, chips and that might be what I need to be able to move forward so we'll, we'll, we'll just see so now we've also got these uh, cutouts because we've effectively got these corner pegs that hold up the board so I've just got to work out, you know, how am I going to uh, cut those? And look, nice, it gives you the radi radii as well. So I guess the e easiest way of doing that is pretty much draw um, in a line that cuts that out and then corner it and then chop it. All right, so this is actually the next day and it's finished. You can see I made quite a few changes, um, just rearranging and rerouting everything and positioning everything quite nicely. So um, we've got the, uh, the jacks down the bottom. 
the logical uh, chips and optocouplers in the middle and the 485 um, transmission uh, around the side. I also added, um, not sure if this was in the previous one, a regulator um, just to boost everything as it goes. So like data comes in, data goes out and triggers set off. So you can see, you know, clearances around the holes, um, clearances from the edge, uh, the curve there and the jacks are slightly popping out so that, you know, uh, they're beyond the, the um, or butting up against the outside edge. And that's basically how you do it. It's a, it is a to and, to and fro um, process. Uh, so basically have your circuit, know the chips that you're going to do, find the box, make it fit into the box. And that's it. This is John Miskos from Tinker Electric. I hope you've enjoyed. Cheers, bye.